Hi Brain fans, uh, welcome to a slightly different Journal Club. Uh, we're once again live from my flat, that much hasn't changed, but I want to talk about uh, coronavirus in this video. Now I know there's a lot of coronavirus content already going out on some of our pages, uh, but we're getting a lot of responses from our readers and a lot of the questions are of a medical nature and because we're journalists, we're not uh, experts or medical professionals, we can't answer these questions. but what we can do is try and explain some of the basic science around coronavirus and its spread uh, in a way that is hopefully quite accessible and also quite tasty. So uh, I'm going to use Tic Tacs to explain a basic concept behind the spread of any virus, which is immunity. Immunity is something which can slow the spread of a virus, uh, but there's, you know, there's a lot of terminology being thrown about in a lot of the coverage of the coronavirus. So I thought I'd create this video and just uh, demonstrate it in a nice, simple way. So what we're going to look at in this video is the spread of virus, uh, this isn't coronavirus, this is just an example virus, through a population where there's no immunity. Now, in a lot of epidemiology and immunology, there's a lot of complicated maths and a lot of complicated statistics and terminology, but the only term I need you to know, which sounds a bit wordy, is the basic reproduction number, or R0. Now, R0 is simply a measure of the average number of infections that would arise from a single case being introduced into a population of people that's entirely susceptible with no immunity. So let's go and have a look at our volunteers, our Tic Tacs for today. So in our first population, uh, we have here a group of naive Tic Tacs, which have no immunity in blue. This guy is extra, so I'm just going to eat him. And we have our infected Tic Tac here being introduced into the population. Now, because these Tic Tacs have no, in, no immunity, the virus can spread quite easily. And the RO for the virus, the R0, uh, as I said, is a measure of how many this single case can infect. And in this case, for this virus, we're going to set it at three. So this one infected case, on average, infects three other Tic Tacs. So that leads us into the next stage of the spread of the virus, in which this one single infected Tic Tac has now infected three more Tic Tacs. And then, as you can imagine, with the same R0, those three Tic Tacs then go on to infect three more each, which leads to a massive rate of increase in terms of the infection, which is when you imagine it being generalized to the wider community, the wider population, gives a hint as to why we've seen the rapid spread of coronavirus uh, across the planet. But let's now think in terms of an immunized population. Now, we don't currently have immunity for coronavirus. Um, we know so little about the virus, we don't really know if people uh, gain natural immunity after recovering from the virus through antibodies in their blood, and we don't know whether uh, or when we're going to be able to create a vaccine for coronavirus, although obviously a lot of incredibly smart researchers are working on doing just that. But for our virus here, our fictional Tic Tac virus, uh, we have now developed a vaccine. So let's have a look at the same population, but with uh, immunization involved. So in are now immunized population. We have here uh, an infected individual being introduced into the population, but now we have these green Tic Tacs which are immune to the infection. So our virus here with not now an R0 because we're in thinking in terms of an immunized population, we now think of just R which is the effective reproduction rate. Uh, and now the R here has been reduced to one because roughly two thirds of the population has been immunized and now our infected Tic Tac can only infect this one naive Tic Tac and our green ones here are immune, which means when we move on to the next stage of the infection, this time it's only spread to one further Tic Tac and then eventually it spreads to just a third Tic Tac there. So their spread has been greatly reduced by the proportion of these vaccinated green Tic Tacs. Now, eventually the aim will be to produce to push that number, that R number, down below one. Because once that happens, uh, individuals in the population will start to recover. And we can take away these two, for example, and bring in some nice green ones here. Now, these individuals have naturally um, gained immunity by recovering from the virus. So that means even if an, another one comes into the population, there's now less uh, infected individuals than there were before. And over time, with an R below zero, below one, that population of infected individuals will decrease and the virus will gradually die out in the population. Now, it is slightly more complicated than that and there's lots of unknowns with uh, the coronavirus that's that's currently um, 
on all of our minds. Now, a key aspect of this is we don't know whether or not immunity happens naturally in the way we might expect with, say, uh, uh, you know, other viruses, like, for example, uh, yearly influenza virus mutates rapidly. So that's why we have to develop a new vaccine for seasonal flu each year. We don't know whether or not SAR, um, SARS-CoV-2, which is the virus which is causing the coronavirus, uh, will, will ultimately show those effects or whether it will have some sort of different spread. And we don't know its seasonality. There's a lot we don't know, but what I am confident of is that there's a lot of incredible scientists working on it and uh, they're doing their absolute best to develop a vaccine as quickly as possible that can bring about this kind of immunity in a population that should see eventually the end of uh, this current pandemic. So that's just been a really short video explaining immunity. Um, obviously, there's a lot more to epidemiology and a lot more to the study of coronavirus than that, but I'm hoping that was a brief snapshot into one of the more basic concepts around the virus. Now, I should be back next week with a more classic neuroscience video, um, but obviously we're in a really ever-changing situation, but I just want to say, everyone, please stay safe, stay healthy, and um, I'll see you next time. Bye for now.